In this week's video, I'm sharing a method that will help you design better stationery forever. By breaking apart layouts that work well, we're instantly able to set ourselves up for success. This video comes from my brand new online stationery course, where you'll learn how to plan, design, and manufacture an entire custom stationery collection. If you'd like to learn more about the course, I'll pop more details right in the video description. Let's get started. Before we begin designing our own stationery, it's important to look at what's already working with stationery that's already out there. So I've pulled together a bunch of different examples for us to dissect different formatted layouts. So we'll start with portrait, which I would say is the most common type of layout for stationery. So we're going to look at a few text heavy layouts just so we can dissect them, look at where the different elements are, as well as the typography, the hierarchy of it, and the different type styles. We're going to learn a lot from this exercise and it's essential to breaking these down. That way we can keep different things in mind that we like, that we can integrate into our own designs. The very first one that I've got here here is a birthday party invitation, but honestly, it could say anything right here. So we're just going to break this down into its core components, talk about the different elements, and then we'll look at a few other ones. So for this one, first, let's look at the typography. We've got a large headline right here and it's script. So I'll just make a note right here that we have headline, script, hand lettered. And down here, we've got a sans serif typeface, but it's important to look at the different styles that they're using because even though this font is the exact same as this font, it's set differently. So up here we've got lowercase, and then down here it's all caps, all the information. So I'm actually going to put each one of these on its own line. So when we think about this from a hierarchy point of view, when you set it in the exact same font, in the exact same style, in the exact same size, that means all of these carry the exact same importance. So that's something to keep in mind. We've got all of this, what I would consider tertiary information because her name, the person that's being celebrated right here is in a bolder, all caps, sans serif. So we can see there's definitely a difference in hierarchy and style with this one. So right now, if we look at this just from what's most important here, we can see the headline is number one. Number two would be the recipient, the person who's being celebrated. And then everything else is the same importance. I would even say like, this would be number four because it's all lowercase, whereas this is all caps. It's the same exact typeface and it's a very similar size. So you could still say that they were the same. So right here we've got a all caps, sans serif, bold, and then our tertiary elements are all caps, smaller, sans serif. And then I'll just throw this one in. This could also be like a three and a half. This is same as number three, but all lowercase. Now that we've dissected the hierarchy here, we can also count the number of styles or fonts that are being used. So we can call the giant headline or hand lettering or a hand lettered font number one, and then her name would be number two, and then the last one is number three, the sans serif, all caps. So we've got three different fonts, and that's it for this one. So I'm going to give myself the outline here. We're creating a composition template right now out of this. And now let's look at the different graphics elements so we can kind of break down what's going on here. We've got design right here. I'm just showing these with scribbles. Let's talk about what we've got right here now. The designer decided to lay out the text is what I'm guessing, and then design around that. So they positioned where they wanted the most important information to go, and it's very clear that birthday party was supposed to be number one, followed by the name of the person being celebrated and then all the extra information. And then all the graphical elements kind of surrounded all that information. If we turn off the image, now we can kind of see what they decided to do from a compositional point of view. I'm not sure why they didn't put anything up here. I think that's kind of a missed opportunity personally, but you can see they filled it really well everywhere else. So if we wanted to use something similar, this is how you would dissect a layout that you like. And then you can pop in your own graphics, you can pop in your own headline, you can choose your own fonts here, but keep in mind like maybe use three different fonts, make sure that your headline's nice and large and prominent, that the person being celebrated is also different. And then one other thing that I wanted to call out before we move on to our next one is let's look at the differences in these three fonts. We've got a script font that's very bold and we have a condensed sans serif. So between the two of these, they kind of have a similar weight to them. So your attention is immediately drawn to those two, which is important because from a hierarchy point of view, they're the most important elements. And then everything else is a lighter weight. It's much smaller. So the point here is that we've got contrast happening. So our eye is easily 
able to determine the importance of the information at hand because you're seeing that contrast immediately. So whenever you're choosing different fonts to pair together, that's like rule number one, make sure that they have contrast. That way, immediately upon seeing it, you can tell where your eye is supposed to travel. So that completes our first example. And I've got a couple more that I wanna walk you through just so we can see the different decisions that different designers make. And then if you see something that you like that you would like to incorporate into your own designs, then you can take note of that and kind of understand why it's working the way it's working.